I tell you truly, this young lady's name is Doris Day. Now, she's probably not the Doris Day that you expected when I announced last week that we were going to have Doris Day on the show. The Doris Day that you had in mind was probably a blonde and a little taller. But as you might have read in the papers, the Hollywood Doris Day uh, is ill, could not be with us this evening. We're terribly sorry. Hope she's better. But we always give you what we promise you. And so when we found that the Hollywood Doris Day couldn't be here, we started a hunt, and we found this Doris Day. And what is, where are you from, honey? 325 North 10th Street, Prospect Park, New Jersey. So here is Doris Day of 325 North 10th Street, Prospect Park, New Jersey, and she's got a secret. <laughs> I've got a secret. Starring Gary Moore. Having met a quite different Doris Day, let's meet a panel that we like to believe is different. And so let's meet them right now. To begin with, there is Bill Cullen, and Bess Meyerson, and Henry Morgan, and Betsy Palmer, and that's the bunch. <laughs> now then, if you heard that loud applause, Henry, in the back, that was for you. David Suskind is in the audience tonight, and I thought you'd like to know. <laughs> now then, I would like to welcome, <laughs> like to welcome our first contestant, please. Will you come in? Good evening, sir. Now, panel, our contestant tonight is the gentleman to my immediate left. We will call him Mr. X. Now, Mr. X does not speak English, but he has brought along an interpreter who sits to his immediate left. So if the interpreter will ask Mr. X to whisper his secret to me, we will show it at the same time to the audience at home. Classify Mr. X's secret. It concerns something that is going to happen. And Bess Meyerson, we'll start with you. Mr. May I address my questions to Mr. X? Yes, anyway. the interpreter will, right. will help. Mr. X, is this going to happen tonight? No. In the near future? In the near future? Uh, yes. Yes. Is it going to happen... In this city of New York? New York. Yes. I see. Uh, does it have anything to do with the Foreign Service in any way? Is it anything to do with the with, with Foreign Service? Um, meaning the uh, uh, State Department. Let's put that. No. No. All right, twenty dollars down, sixty dollars to go, and we go to Henry Morgan, please. Uh, Mr. Interpreter, I can't hear you. What language are you speaking? <laughs> well, I'll ask him. Uh, uh, can you uh, say something aloud in your native tongue, like "Good evening"? It is nice to be here. Good evening. Is that Swedish? Is that Swedish, sir? Yes, it is. Um... Now, all questions from now on, please, will be directed to Mr. X. In all right, Swedish. Mr. X, is this in Swedish? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> The only thing I can say in Swedish is meatball. <laughs> Mr. X, is this going to be an award of some kind? Uh, is this event going to be uh, the giving of an award? A prize of some kind? Is there a prize at stake here? Let's put it that way. Not yelling with Yes. Yes. Yes? Is it anything to do with... Uh, uh, since you're Swedish, has it anything to do with the Nobel Prize? Uh, no. Um, well, goodbye. Forty dollars down, forty dollars to go, Betsy Palmer. Uh, does it have anything to do with the entertainment world, sir? Is this event in the entertainment world? Uh, is it a theatrical event? No. No, no it is not. Anything to do with sports? <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Um, what are the Svenskers known for? Fighting. Ingemar Fight. Johansson. No. Yeah. Uh, does it have anything to do with water, as far as sports are concerned? With water? Yes. Water? No. No. Uh, now, $60 down, $20 to go, and we come to Bill Cullen, who for the last five minutes has been sitting there looking like the cat who swallowed the canary. Bill, you're on. That's what happened. I just swallowed the canary. <laughs> I was hoping the answer to the water was yes, because I could ask if he was a famous Swedish water boy. But I noticed a golf jacket on the interpreter. Does it have anything to do with golf? <laughs> I well, how come an interpreter is wearing a golf j uh, jacket? I think that's a dirty <laughs> trick. Does it have anything to do with a heavyweight championship fight? <laughs> it, it has to do with Ingemar Johnson, naturally. Something's going to happen to you. You are going to second Ingemar Johnson in the fight, or you are his manager. One of those. Two. Are you going to? Is he either going to second Ingemar Johnson or Johansson, or is he going to uh, uh, be his manager? He won't. Uh, is it going to be either of those? Is he going to be a second, or or is he the manager of Ingemar Johansson? Uh, no, I don't I think the answer is no. Well, apparently, the gentleman sitting to my direct left is Mr. Jens Johansson. His secret is that his son, Ingemar Johansson, will fight Floyd Patterson for the heavyweight championship of the world next month. already guessed, their interpreter for the evening has been Ingemar Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> the glasses and the Ivy League jacket kind of took a toll, didn't it, over there? That golf jacket's a very dirty thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ingemar, first of all, let us say we're, we're honored to have you with us. Uh, will you ask your dad a question for me? Yes. Uh, ask him how he feels when you are in the ring fighting. What, when he watches you fighting. How do you feel, Papa, when I was in the ring? I was a little nervous. He told me that he is a little bit nervous. He's a little nervous. How do you feel when you're in the ring fighting? Do you feel a little nervous? Uh, just before we start, I feel a bit, little bit uh, nervous, but uh, that's necessary. If I'm not nervous, it, uh, you don't fight well. No, mm -hmm. I don't uh, watch the guy enough. Well, I, you know, I always like to get a little advance information from people who know. Will you ask your father who's going to win the fight? Then to the win, huh? I was talking to the gang from Sports Illustrated, and they tell me that they think you have got a wanking good chance at it. It's going to be a great fight. I wish you luck. Wish Floyd luck, too, of course. Good fight. Thanks so much. Here's the money that you won. And we win. Isn't he a marvelous looking guy? And by the way, we are indebted to the... I don't have a copy of Sports Illustrated here. I wanted to hold it up to give them a plug because they have been very kind in uh, seeing to it that uh, both Mr. Johansons were with us tonight. But now, my friends, having had that thrill, and it was for me at least, now it is time for us to meet our special guest for tonight. Now, as you know, we had a secret all prepared for the Hollywood RS Day, and as I've said, she was not well and just simply couldn't make it. But our New Jersey Doris Day has kindly consented to fill in for her tonight and take over the secret we had planned for Doris. Now, naturally, this young lady is not a professional and therefore does not ad lib, so we have prepared a complete script for her from which she will read. So now, let's meet the star of the new Columbia picture, It Happened to Jane, which happens to co-star the I've Got a Secret panel and myself. All of us are in the same movie, that fast. <laughs> and here is the beautiful actress and singer, Miss Doris Day. <laughs> this is where I say, good evening, Doris. It's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you too, Gary. I must say the panel and I certainly enjoyed working with you in your new movie, It Happened to Jane. It's a place, it's 
The pleasure is all mine, Gary. They're a charming group. There you are, panel. You're a charming group. Now, when does the picture open? It opened last night in Boston. Now, Doris, can you tell us about your secret for tonight? I'll be happy to, Gary. But first, the panel will have to go into the soundproof room because I, my, my secret is rather diff complicated. complicated. And I have to explain it to you. Very well, panel. You have your orders. Go to the soundproof room. Take your blindfolds with you, please. And return blindfold. Stay tuned. There's more. Hi, welcome back. Now, uh, Doris, the movie that we all made together is about railroading, which I assume is why you've had this model train set up on stage. But what does that have to do with the secret? We're going to have a race. A train race? Why? Because I want to see, because I want to find out which of the panelists talks the most. Well, I'd like to find that out myself, which one talks the most. But how are we going to do that with a train race? Because each train is connected to a micro microphone. microphone on the panel set. I see. Now, in other words, Bill's microphone is connected to this set of trains, which is marked Bill Cullen. And whenever Bill talks, the sound of his voice will be converted into electricity, and that will move his train. Now, the longer his questions are, the further his train will move. Then when Bess Meyerson asks the questions, her train will move, and so on. And therefore, whoever talks the most will win the race. Now, let me show you how this works. I'll get over on, on Bill's mic. Now, you watch Bill's train, and as I talk, it moves. If I talk in jerks, it moves that way. Or if I take my time, then there he goes. Now then, can we, there goes Bill's train back, and I have to get Bess back in line, too. She was hunching. <laughs> oh, okay. A little further back, fellas. A little further back. That does it. All right. Now, the idea is that we're having a contest to see which panelist talks the most, and whoever gets, um, whoever gets a set of trains over the finish line first will be nominated in the Big Loud Mouth of 1959. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, let's have the panel back with their blindfolds on, please. And, Doris, may I tell you, you're doing a lovely job. Thank you. Thank I'm, you, Gary. I'm sure that she's had such trouble learning to call me Gary. She called you Mr. Moore, and I said, no, you're a grown-up Doris Day, and you're supposed to call me Gary. And so every time she says Gary, it kind of sticks in her throat. <laughs> now, panel, here we are all back more or less seated. <laughs> Bess, you've got two more chairs to go. There you are. There you go. Everyone is seated. Now, panel... <laughs> concern something uh, that is happening we're going to have you ask one question at a time please but we'll keep going until the game is over now we have a little audio problem here so please move about six inches from your microphones and talk loudly and distinctly into your microphone now we'll start with Beth Myers and please concern and something, happening. Microphone. something is happening right now on stage yes yes um, are there moving parts Oh, I heard something. Are there moving parts? Yes. Yes. Are you on roller skates? No. No. Are you both doing this? No, and I gave you three questions, only supposed to give you one. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll That's take them all back. <laughs> we go from Bess Myerson to Henry Morgan, please. One question. Henry? Oh, all right. I want to think of a good one. said something funny. You um, have no idea how funny it was. Hold the ball. Okay. Doris. Are you riding on something? No. <laughs> That's mine. 
Well, it's, uh... It's Betsy's turn. Yes. Is it my turn? Uh, Doris, are you having a race? No. Of some sort? No. No? Bill, it's uh, there, is a, there is a race involved. I'm sorry, I wasn't even listening. I'm so upset. <laughs> We're going out of Bill Cullen. Well, what I think is right. The question I would like to ask is, this thing that you're doing, young lady, does it at all have to do anything with such a thing as a contest among the four panelists and myself? Maybe I better rephrase that question and simply say, the longer I talk, do I do better than I ordinarily would have done if I hadn't spoken and asked such a short question? Let's go to Bess Meyerson for one more and see what happens. <laughs> Wait a minute. Gary, you never answered Bill's question. What was his question? I forgot. <laughs> Will you repeat his question, please? Well, is, it, is it a race, he said, that had to do with the four panelists? That's all in I some said. Way. That's all. And yes. he kept talking. <laughs> now, Henry, your turn. I didn't uh, understand his question to be I that at all. I thought that Bill said that it had I anything to do with... among yourself. And that's my I have a feeling that we're not getting along too well. All blindfolds off. <laughs> now, the voice impulses from your microphone have been moving your train. Now, who's this? Betsy? Is this Betsy here? That's Beth. That's Beth. Uh, Beth, talk into this. Talk closely. Oh, no, 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 no. So come on, boy. <laughs> oh, look at oh, that. Oh, come on, Henry, let me explain. We've been trying to find out which panelist talks the most because your trains moved in direct proportion to your voice. Everything was going fine. You asked one simple question like, uh, and your train went the whole end of the thing. So you hereby win the award, Mr. Blabbermouth of 1959. I'm sure that your mother who's watching must be proud of you. Your money will be waiting for you backstage, and we'll uh, also have a card in the Winston's for your dad. And thanks ever so much. I'm very proud of this young lady, Doris Day. <laughs> now, let's meet an equally fascinating guest. Will you come in, sir, please? <laughs> well, you, um... Oh, and by the way, yes. You, you're a nice man. He brought me, he says, plug Ravel trains. <laughs> the Ravel company was so kind. They put in these beautiful HO trains. They've been working here all day and made this nifty setup for us, which is tremendously complicated. They sent me a set, which I have at home. I've been playing trains all week. Ravel HO trains. Now then, sir, will you tell uh, the panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? My name is Dr. Henry Redke, and I'm a practicing dentist from Mount Vernon, New York. This is Dr. Redke, R-E-D-K-A. Uh, will you whisper your secret to me, Dr. Redkin? Our panel, Dr. Redkin's secret concerns something he is going to do. And we will start again with uh, Betsy. Oh, my. I do. Betsy's going to pull everybody's teeth. I hope not. Are you going to do this to any of us tonight? No. no? Oh. Good. Uh, are you going to be doing this soon, though, Doctor? Yes. I mean, like uh, within the next week? Yes. Does it have to do with dentistry? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Does it have to do with sports? No. How about the entertainment world? Mm, no. Science? No. Well. I think if we had to... If we had to classify this, we would say that this is not really a professional entertaining that he is going to do, but it would have to come under entertainment more than any other, any other subject, wouldn't you say? Well, it wouldn't be entertaining, yes. Yes. I assure you that it is. Twenty dollars down, sixty dollars to go, and we go to Bill Cullen. Does it have something to do with a hobby of yours, Doctor? Yes. 
Are you going to perform what you usually do in your hobby here on stage for us tonight before you leave? Yes. Is your hobby in any way allied with dentistry? No. Is it, do you use a tool or tools in order to pursue this hobby? Uh, yes. Do you carve? Because no. I always think of dentists as carving. $40 gone? Bess Meyerson? Uh, is this, would this be considered an unusual ability that you have? Yes. And it required some special training. Did you have to go well, to... Well, not special training. I mean, you didn't have to go to school or anything no, no. like that. It's a, it's a physical manipulation mm -hmm. of some kind. Are you going to throw things at Gary? Oh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, that. No, he's a nice man. No. <laughs> um, you're going to throw something at an object? Not throw it, no. No, are you going to use... All right, $60 down, $20 to go. We go to Henry Morgan, please. Doctor, do you, do you use a special device that you made? Yes. Is there a title for it? Could I come up with the uh, answer? Is there a name no, of this No, I don't believe thing? so. I doubt it. I doubt oh, boy. You is could, it, you know, if we were is it electric? It. No. Does it move? Does it have moving parts? No. No moving parts. All right, you're going to see this. Panel, Dr. Redka's secret is something that you're going to have to see to believe. He is going to put me inside a soap bubble. In the interest of time, Dr. Redka, so we'll have ultimate time for the performance, I would like to say this is his hobby. He, he designs toys for a hobby. He started blowing bubbles with a conventional little wire hoop, but he wasn't satisfied. He worked up and up and up. Let's see how far up he worked, and let's get the uh, curtains open, please. Now, I hope you get set up, Doctor. First is just a plastic film that we put over the stage floor so as it should not get too slippery, and people, therefore, fall down. We now have over here a three-inch deep pan of a special mixture of Dr. Redka's. And he starts with the smallest of his hoops, and now he'll show you that he's, how you can chop a bubble in half, or even quadrisect it. You gotta get a bubble first. Well, it takes time sometimes. graduate to a slightly larger hoop, ring, whatever you choose to call it. And isn't that pretty? a bad thing to say on black and white television, but you should have color because the colors are gorgeous. Now we go to a larger hoop. Now then, if I may have my raincoat ducky, Thank you. While I'm plugging trains and things, raincoat in this instance is by courtesy of Guild Face, our executive producer. Now, am I standing in the right place? We've got 30 All seconds. Right. 30 seconds. Oh. We'll make it. Fear not. Oh. One more try. Oh. we got time for one more. It's promised down by Samuel Winston. This is John Cattle speaking. Now stay tuned for the Armstrong Circle Theater, which follows on most of these same stations.
That's mine. But it's, uh... It's Betsy's turn. Yeah, is it my turn? Uh, 